where civility is always in style. We're certainly glad that you've joined us today on KXEX 1550 AM. Remember, we're on Saturdays at 4, Sundays at 6, but you can also catch us on Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, you name it, we got it. We let you listen when you want to listen. And also, you can catch Good News with Larry Powell, nothing but good news stories Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. and at 4 p.m. But one of the things we really like, we talk about politics, education, religion, technology, sports, values and healthy communities and a lot of good things are going on so we're glad you've joined us today uh, please make sure you hit that share button if you're watching us on facebook or if you're on spotify you can share that as well let people know about uh, good news with larry powell and powell to the people uh, we've got some great guests and today i've got a really good guest with me tammy beers is here director of cef we're going to talk to her in just a minute but uh, the world we live in right now is just a crazy place we need as much normality as possible, and I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of people in Fresno doing great things. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to what's going to happen uh, uh, this summer. A lot of activities for kids. There are a lot of things. My kids are going to camp, my grandkids. Um, they've got uh, two sets of camps. Uh, my daughter and son-in-law are heading to the coast. Uh, Nana and Papa get to take care of the kids. I mean, it's a good time. We uh, We love what's going on, and you know, all the years of education dot uh 30 plus years and uh as a principal and a teacher and uh, i've got uh, 43 to depend on how you count it maybe 50 years in education it's a long time but it was all good and i love what god does uh when you step up and right now we've got somebody who stepped up a long time ago tammy beers director of cef child evangelism fellowship does an absolutely amazing, amazing job. Tammy, welcome. Glad to have you on Powell to the People. Thank you, Larry. I'm so glad to be here today. Well, I'll tell you what, I have always admired what you've done with uh, CEF. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that and uh, the great people that you've assembled as a team uh, doing some good things. And for folks that don't know what CEF is all about, we're going to talk about that too. But I wanna, want our folks to learn a little more about you. Where did you grow up? Well, I'm a California girl, born and raised in Merced, California. So you're a valley girl. <laughs> I am, and uh, moved to the big city in 1980 to go to Fresno State. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I'm a Fresno State grad, too. A lot of us are. Yes. And, uh, you know, we, we always say that whenever we talk Fresno State, bulldog born, bulldog bred, be a bulldog till the day I'm dead. Yeah, you know? that's a great thing. <laughs> yeah, Jim Sweeney came up with that when he was coaching football. And things. So what did you major in when you went to, to Fresno State? My undergraduate degree is in nursing, and I had a 22 and a half year career at St. Agnes Medical Center Amazing. in my first life yeah. and an MBA from the Sid Craig School of Business at wow. Fresno State. Wow, what a combination. That is really neat. Uh, uh, in a way, uh, I'm surprised they didn't recruit you to come back during COVID because the, there was such a shortage of healthcare workers. You know, crazy well, time. You know, I thought that I would be running my own hospital at one point and actually spent a year at the corporate offices for the Holy Cross Health System in an wow. administrative fellowship. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the Lord had a different plan, different plan. and it was much more, um, well, it was perfect for me. Yes. Uh, but I didn't know it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, what high school did you go to? I went to Merced High School. It okay. was the only high school at the time. We had two campuses, yeah, yeah. Um, but just the uh, one high school. Yeah, Brothers or sisters? I have one sister who's okay. three years younger, and she likes to remind me of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the oldest too, so <laughs> uh, I get to experience everything first, yes. and then they ask questions That's right. about that. Well, uh, what was life like for you when you were growing up? Well, you know, um, my parents divorced at a young age, and I didn't really think about this until several years later that I knew that my grandmother was the strongest spiritual mentor for me in my yeah. life. And she had picked me up for a midweek evangelistic service oh, I when it. I was eight. Yeah. And I don't remember what the pastor said, but I remember clearly bolting off the pew, running to the altar to believe in Jesus as my savior. Wow, at eight years old. At eight years old. Yeah. Um, and what surprises me, because I've been told this by my family, I don't have a personal memory, is the pastor followed up right away to arrange for my baptism. 
And I told him that I didn't want to be baptized in the church. I wanted to be baptized in a river like Jesus. I love it. He couldn't do that. (laughs) He couldn't do that. But my grandmother found a pastor in Livingston, California, who did in fact baptize me in the Merced River. Wow. Kudos to grandma. (laughs) Yes. Yes. She was amazing. But what dawned on me in years past that was, I think it was within a year of that time that my parents divorced. Yeah. And I don't know how I would have managed lots of different struggles and circumstances as a child without the Lord and a young adult without the Lord. Yeah. And so he entered my life and I received him willingly. Yeah. And I think it was the difference maker for me, for sure. Wow. Well, what a unique thing, because when we talk about CEF Child Evangelism Fellowship, uh, you deal with a lot of young kids and elementary school. And we're going to talk about what that means and all that. But your experience then as an eight-year-old had to have an impact with helping you with what you think now and how you work with kids and all the things. I know you're you're with uh, a whole lot of kids doing a whole lot of good things. So tell me about your family now, though. Well, now I'm married to my husband, Michael, and yep. we'll celebrate 32 years this year for our marriage. Neat. And, uh, two adult sons, uh, one who is married. And, um, you know, we are grateful. We have his extended family is here, brothers and sisters, his mom and, um, family is just really important. Yeah. My family's still in Merced. Okay. So they're still there and Mike's family's here. Yes. Yeah. So how'd you guys meet? Well, we met through at St. Agnes. Um, I was an administrative director and he came to help us out with some short-term projects wound up turning into a full-time position wow. and uh, was such a, I mean, such a great help. Um, the administrative center at St. Agnes was one of my building projects yeah. and he was working there. And um, within a year we were engaged and that's where it all began. I love it. <laughs> I had my children at St. Agnes. I met my husband at St. Agnes. I have no <laughs> regrets about my career at St. Agnes. No, that's good. <laughs> I, well, when St. Agnes was over on fruit, Floridora, was it? Floridora yeah. and things, uh, I had my, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think I had my appendix out there. Um, so I've, I've been associated with St. Agnes <laughs> in one way or another for a lot of years as well. Yes. Uh, and uh, when Dot had an aneurysm, my wife, uh, we went first to St. Agnes. Now, they weren't able to do all the things there because the neurosurgery center was actually down at Community where they did a right. fantastic job. We, uh, we're very blessed in Fresno to have the, the kind of hospital care that we have. Kaiser is here. Yes. There's a bunch of really good folks that, that really care about people and do good good work. Um, and my doctor is my for, one of my former students. He's the smartest kid I ever had. <laughs> that's good. Uh, Dr. Gong, that's why he's my doctor. You know? I, I know who that is. Yeah. And uh, it is. It's We are privileged. And um, I'm proud to say that my youngest son is a registered nurse in the ICU at Clovis Community oh, Hospital. Oh, fantastic. So, yes. Yeah. You know, nurses sometimes move all around, but we yeah. all have the same goal yeah. to care and for patients. What do you think about all the traveling nurses that we have now? Boy, they're, they're going all over the place. Well, you know. Know, uh, from a career perspective, if a nurse wants to travel, I think it has great perks. We've had travel nurses forever. Okay. When I first came in 1980, many of my colleagues at St. Agnes were from Canada as oh, traveling right? nurses. Wow. Um, but it's evolved uh, a lot because of shortages. Sure. When I was uh, first in nursing, we used to talk about appliance nurses. Nurses who uh, would quit working to be with their kids, but then when the refrigerator broke or the washer dryer, they'd come back till they made enough money to pay for the appliance and then they'd leave again. (laughs) So it's very uh, mobile and transitional. And so there is certainly a need. Um, I wish that uh, people could stay and be content uh, so that they have that commitment, that dedication to a population of people. Um, There's something about, you know, when you maybe you've cared for a patient and then they come back. And right. you've, you've known them, you've seen them from before, you know, you've already a little bit about their yeah. history. And, you know, we get that as educators, uh, you know, you get the, I've had the, the grandmother, the daughter and the daughter's daughter. Yes. So I've had generational, you know, families and there's something unique about that. You're, mm-hmm. you're right. Uh, I have good friends that uh, provide housing for transitional nurses okay. uh, in their backyard. They've got a beautiful little place set up and it's, they can come in and out six months or whatever they're going to be here and that right. kind of thing. It helps in the shortages, but the long-term connection is an important one, I think. You know? It is. Yeah. And then it, there's, you know, 
there's issues with people who are there who who pull the line day to day and stay faithful. Oh boy! And there's issues with pay and benefits and all that. It's complicated. It is very complicated, boy. I, I tell you, I have had nothing but great experiences with uh, the medical field. Uh, having had polio in 1949, uh, I was in and out of hospitals for the early part of my life, and then a lot during. I had a variety of surgeries and things. But I have had nothing but the greatest of care from doctors, nurses. The nurses were fantastic. Uh, physical therapists that worked with me, you name it, um, very, very blessed. So it's it's a good thing. And I really feel for them with what they went through with COVID. It was a tough time, you know. It, it certainly was. Yeah. And, and, you know, we got to see that through my son's experience because he had just uh, graduated and became licensed December 2019. Oh, man. Uh, he'd been working there as a patient care assistant so before. So his first two years were tough two years, you know. Yeah. Well, we've got with us today uh, Tammy Beers, from, uh, director of CEF. We're going to learn more about that, but uh, Tammy is quite a thing to go from a nursing career to a director of a child evangelism fellowship. We're going to hear more about that when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. You're listening to Powell to the People. Write it down. Hey, Facebook folks, we're certainly glad you're with us. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we really have a great program today. Uh, Tammy Beers is a person with an amazing heart who is connected with thousands of kids in the Valley, has hired some great people, tremendous volunteers. We'll learn more about that in our next segment. People on the best talk in town. Hey, welcome back to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. And uh, you've been listening to Tammy Beers, uh, the director of uh, Child Evangelism Fellowship, uh, an amazing program. We're going to learn more about that right now. Uh, but, you know, uh, I love people who are connected to schools and because having been a superintendent and been in education almost all of my career, uh, I'm amazed at what kids survive and go through and and what they need. And, and boy, what you offer with Child Evangelism Fellowship, and we're going to call that CEF for folks, you know, uh, just so you know, it's Child Evangelism Fellowship but we refer to it colloquially as CEF. So uh, tell me a little bit, uh, what got you into the idea of even thinking about being a part of CEF? I was so hoping you were going to ask me that <laughs> because um, you probably know what's coming. But I, do. I was in church <laughs> one Sunday morning, and I, I want to just pre, uh, preview that with, I retired voluntarily from my career at St. Agnes in 2002 and uh, wanted to be a full-time mom to my two sons. And uh, prior to that had been the primary wage earner for our family. Wow. Um, so I really was looking forward to that. And uh, when I heard Larry Powell speaking <laughs> at my church one year later, the mm. Lord did give me one year. One year at um, home. <laughs> he happened to be there to encourage uh, teachers and educators, school administrators who are returning to school about, you know, what you can do legally and what, you, you know, in terms of encouraging people sure. who were of faith background. And you mentioned uh, two things that uh, are seared into my brain. First, one thing that you said was uh, an individual under or over the age of 15 has less than a 15% chance of ever uh, believing in Jesus Christ as yeah. their savior. Yeah. And I wept. Mm. I was so embarrassed. I felt ashamed because I had not considered the eternal future of children in my neighborhood, right. of my kids' friends. Most of us don't. You and know? I was an active mom. I was president of the PTA for the school. Um, and I just couldn't believe it. And then... You went on to say at one point, there's a new ministry where these good news clubs can happen in elementary schools after school and people, our no. children are learning about Jesus. And I know, because I'm the only one that ran after you after that service <laughs> and said, how do I find out more? Yeah. So I will be eternally grateful that the Lord spoke to me through you on that well, Sunday morning. And that was in 2003. That's amazing. Uh, it's hard to believe that's 19 years ago. <laughs> I know. You, know? you haven't aged a bit, Larry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But, it, you know, it, it was uh, pretty remarkable. My wife was principal at the time and, um, you know, and two of her colleagues and she, basically had the first CEF classes on campus. 
uh, where uh, after school classes are available for kids to come. It's all voluntary. Uh, and it's an amazing thing because so many kids don't have a positive adult role model in their lives to begin with, and they don't know anything about the Lord. Uh, it's just a, it's tough. And so many of our kids, especially in Fresno Unified, where um, 50% of the kids have, you know, one, one parent in the family, uh, it's a tough life. M- mothers raising kids by themselves, uh, a lot of challenges, a whole lot of challenges, but uh, Dot saw that as a principle, and so did uh, a bunch of other folks. And so they uh, had good news clubs coming on campus. And uh, I was blessed in that uh, as county superintendent of schools, I got to tell other superintendents that the Supreme Court made a decision in 2001 that uh, good news clubs, which CEF runs, uh, were allowed on campus just like a chess club, a ski club, or any other club on campus, and it was voluntary and done after school, and and kids could come and be a part of that. So really unique. Yes, and you may not be aware that we took your little, um, I think it was Channel 30 did a brief interview with you on that, and we made tons of copies and sent it and (laughs) used it to promote. And uh, you had a direct quote that I have used over and over again with principals who are a little uh, nervous about this. And what I have said to them is it is an optional extracurricular after school activity. We are not uh, making children come. Parents have to register their children for the program. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's their decision. It's a parental choice. It's not yep. the school's choice uh, to determine if it's right or not for the whole population of families. Yeah, that's right. And I also went on to tell superintendents, I don't want to get you in trouble with the law. Yes. So you need <laughs> to allow these clubs to be on campus. You know? <laughs> I, I know it. I think I have it almost memorized. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and it it is amazing. So tell us a little bit about uh, what is CF, CEF all about and Good News Clubs and, you know, what what happens with them? I would be happy to. Uh, first of all, uh, our local chapter is essentially a training and equipping center because we wouldn't be able to reach the children we reach without volunteer resources. Yeah. So Christian volunteers, and this is important, who do believe that children can be uh, faithfully believe in Jesus and be regenerated, um, they're the ones that are moved and motivated to come to training and to pass all of our background screenings. And you do a really good job of that. So principals can be really confident that the person sent to campus to work with kids after school is going to be vetted. They're going to be the top quality people. Uh, They're going to care about kids. They're going to do the right thing. Right, right. And that is so important to us. It's important to us for the protection of the children. And honestly, in this day and age, it's important for the protection of the worker against false accusations. So no one is ever alone with a child, uh, a minimum of two workers at all times. But the fun is really that after school, uh, the children gather who've been registered for the club and they start with songs and they immediately learn um, that God loves them. Mm. And, you know, for many, that's a foreign concept. They have no idea. And they have no idea, even if they see those little crosses that has a little man on it, who that man is. And so it's important, and that's why we provide training, that they learn how to explain and share the gospel in terms that a child will understand. Right. Um, And then we teach them Bible verses that will be powerful in their life. And we do allow them to and invite them Uh, to believe in Jesus as their savior. Um, And then as we're there week to week, that provides discipleship for them. Uh, We love it when churches adopt schools uh, or our program, our Good News Club, because then that church can provide their information to the children in the club that if they don't already have a church, and so many do not, um, that they, you know, would be welcome at the church that's sponsoring that club. In fact, in a lot of cases, try to connect the church that's close to a school so it's a neighborhood connection there. Right, and part really, of the bigger yeah, family. Yeah, makes a big, big difference. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, you have uh, volunteers that do all of this, but uh, y- how many people do you have on staff working with you? We have a total of seven in our chapter, and we're the largest staff chapter in Northern California. Yeah. Um, we serve uh, Fresno, Madera, Tulare, and Kings County. Um, 
you know, everything it's these days. It's a big area. It is a big area. <laughs> and, you know, I think we're accustomed to saying pre-pandemic, uh, we were in 122 schools per school year. We were in 14 school districts within those four counties. Um, and we probably had a volunteer workforce, I call them an army of evangelists, uh, of about 300. And um, it was thrilling. It was exciting. Um, we were so pleased um, to be able to reach four to 5,000 children just in after school programs. Wow. But we didn't leave it up. We don't hang it up and take the summers off. Uh, <laughs> we train and provide summer five day clubs. We do party clubs. And what we've done a lot in recent years is outreach events yes. with uh, bringing broken neighborhoods back together with Cornerstone Church for poli any many law enforcement opportunities uh, where we can go into the neighborhoods, set up a booth with a fun, attractive theme for children. Like, do you have two birthdays? or um, the, the message of the Easter egg, yeah. or whatever it might be. It'll be seasonal and fun um, to share the gospel with children. Yeah. And we, we reach an equal amount of children through that outreach event. Boy, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, it's amazing because you do have partnership with uh, law enforcement, and they, they're really glad that, that these kinds of clubs exist uh, simply because kids have a place to go and, a, and something to do as well. So it works out really good. So you have a number of churches that partner with you. Um, and I know that, uh, you know, it makes a big difference when you have those partners. It certainly does. And uh, we actually have a, a little video that if people were to go to our website to watch, um, there's a great testimony uh, with Brian Kane, Pastor Brian Kane, uh, with Grace Place in Clovis, yeah. that he doesn't see them going just to reach the children they're embracing everyone on the campus from the janitorial staff to the principal uh they're a light and as their church they do a lot to promote and to support events at the school year round yeah, it's exactly. not just during the good news club season yeah and um it's a wonderful testimony if if any pastors are available to go and check it out i would encourage them to see yeah, it and that website is cef uh, org. Uh, and that, that is, is that, that the one you use? That's, that is to our state Main site. One. Okay. And then you can choose the Central Valley South chapter. Gotcha. So Central Valley South chapter of CEF NorCal.org. And you can catch that video and a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, well, I can't believe how fast, uh, segments go by. We're almost done with our second one, but, uh, you know, uh, 122 clubs, that's pretty, uh, our schools, schools, that's pretty amazing. Uh, and that takes a lot of people to be able to do that. It really does. Um, and we've had to make some adjustments and amendments for things, uh, certainly since we've come back. But one of the things we did to accomplish that is we have opportunities for people to be on travel teams. Oh, nice. So they might go to two schools. They'll do one school in the spring and a different school in the fall Okay. to reach more children. Yeah, I love what you're doing. Uh, it's really good stuff. Uh, you know, folks, so you're listening to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. And my special guest today is Tammy Beers, director of CEF, Child Evangelism Fellowship, doing some really amazing work. We really want you to go to the website, find out uh, more about it, cefnorcal.org, and uh, look for that Central Valley connection on that. We'll be right back. You're listening to Powell to the People. Write it down. People on the best talk in town. Hey, welcome back to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. Remember, you can catch us on uh, KEX, KXEX 1550 AM, Saturdays at 4, Sundays at 6. Be sure and hit that share button and let people know about us. Uh, if you've got a Facebook account, uh, please uh, hit that share button there as well. Because we talk politics, education, religion, technology, sports, values, healthy communities. If it's interesting to you, we want to help share it with you and tell you what's going on. Plus, you can catch Good News with Larry Powell. Nothing but good news, and that's Monday through Friday right here on KXEX 1550 AM uh, at 10 o'clock and at 4 o'clock. Also, we uh, we offer the show at times you can listen at your leisure. It's at Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, you name it, we got it. 
we got a place for you to listen, and we're so glad that you're with us today. I'll tell you what, my, some of my favorite bumper music comes from uh, Mark Lowry. Uh, when uh, that song that he does for me is Some Things Never Change, and lots of times you think, ah, nothing ever changes. But what he's talking about is God's love and faithfulness never changes. So it's really cool. Well, with me today is Tammy Beers, director of CEF, uh, Child Evangelism Fellowship, and the Good News Clubs. Uh, which the Supreme Court in 2001 ruled that uh, good news clubs are allowed on campuses, public school campuses, uh, just like a chess club, a ski club, you name it. Uh, there's an opportunity because it's voluntary and a chance for kids to hear the good news about Jesus Christ in a really uh, great setting where you have fantastic people who volunteer and come in. So uh, COVID affected things a lot uh, during this last couple of years. Are they starting to lighten up again? Is it is, is it opening up again? It is. You know, when we got word that we had to stop our clubs in March of 2020. Oh, that was hard. Um, we got together as a team and said, we've got to still find a way to reach the kids. So we had a more of a, what you'd call private YouTube channel that we used uh, for our staff to do lesson reviews for our volunteer teachers who are in the outlying areas and counties nice. to log on and to be refreshed about the material for that week. So we quickly changed it and uh, hit all of the teaching videos and started making videos for children, oh, memory nice. verses, songs, uh, little encouraging fun things. Um, and our great field missionaries, uh, primarily Aaron Keller, who's a field missionary Aaron's and a teacher a great trainer. Guy. Yes. Um, he's become our tech audio visual <laughs> wizard. Uh, he, we've stretched him, but you know, we have a great uh, volunteer uh, governing committee as well. And George and Rhonda Temple, um, who are known by many people through oh, yes. People's Church and others. Good folks. Um, Rhonda sits on our governing committee and oh, by the way, Rhonda and I met in elementary school, both attending the same church in Merced. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Wow. Yes. Our paths crossed again after about 30, 40 years, literally. And um, we met and had coffee and I asked her if she'd consider coming on as she's been serving now for two years That's on our amazing. governing committee. But they brought wonderful talent with them. Yes. And so they've shared their skills and their knowledge, uh, helped us. So we've uh, been able to continue the YouTube. We went to z online Zoom clubs. Okay. But the really great news is that this last January, uh, Fresno Unified was the third largest school district in the state. Yes. Um, they let us back on campus. Oh, man. They're that's the only great. ones that let us back on campus. Yeah. And we were so grateful. Um, we were able to be total because the outlying schools also led us on campus. And so we were actually in 50 school sites um, during this last semester of school. And I am so pleased to say that we have 38 schools approved in Fresno and Clovis, um, a couple in Madeira, uh, for beginning again in the fall. Okay. Um, but we have many more that we plan to ask for right now. We can't get approvals because everybody's out, yes, <laughs> yes. but we've got them lined up. We, you know, where our target would be to be in 80 to a hundred more schools this year. If the Lord provides, right. Um, we need more volunteers to do that. Um, and of course we always need support, but the volunteer resources are so precious to us. Oh, big time. Uh, in fact, uh, your volunteers, uh, they do a statement of faith. Uh, they agree with a child protection policy. Uh, that's really unique to you guys as an organization. Uh, you go right through this list of things. They complete worker compliance agreements. Uh, online screening is available. But you're really recruiting a cream of the crop folks to come out and work with the kids. We are. And you know, Larry, that's to stay on as a volunteer. So you start with an application and before we do anything else, there's an interview and Deborah Nagaga, who is uh, a gift to us from the Lord from Uganda, who's yes. a U.S. citizen now and yes. been with us for several years. She's our training coordinator, but she also screens every applicant that gotcha. comes to the ministry. So you meet Deborah first <laughs> and Deborah interviews them. And that's where you really learn the heart of someone. You uh, find out how mature they are in their faith, because 
honestly, teaching the word of God isn't for the brand new believer. We we need a maturity there so that they can respond with discernment and godly wisdom when children ask those tough questions. And kids do ask tough questions. They do. (laughs) They do. And sometimes the wisest one is, let me pray about that and get back to you. (laughs) No, exactly. Um, But anyway, uh, so there's several steps in addition to then the background screening, the DOJ checking, which is a new law that came in effect this Justice, year. Yep. And so those things all happen. And then that's to maintain. I mean, they have to sign that statement of faith every year Gotcha. that they're still in agreement because yeah. circumstances can change. And that's on your website as well. So yes. you can, uh, folks, if you'd like to uh, check that out, I think there are 13 or 15 principles that are on there, you know, uh, yeah. concepts, which is really neat. Um, but uh, if you you have an interest in, and you don't necessarily have to just be uh, uh, retired, uh, you've got uh, mothers who have an hour or two. Uh, how often are they actually on campus each week? Well, they can make that choice, but typically a team will serve one day a week. Okay. Uh, a club lasts 75 to 90 minutes after school. And when you think about all the hours in a week that can influence a child for bad, yes. we love to choose that one hour <laughs> as the golden hour of the week where you can make an influence for good. Boy, it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, how do you get assigned to a school? Can you help choose a school? Do you work uh, with a volunteer on that? Or, you know, do you say, no, we want you to go to Kalinga or wherever? We we let people go where they want if they have a passion. I mean, yeah. if they have a school in their neighborhood like I did yeah. uh, when I started the one at Red Bank Elementary, um, that's where I went and stayed for 10 years that wow. I taught in that. Um, that overlapped with my getting hired at uh, CEF later on. But um, if someone comes in and says, well, I think this is such an important program, then we say, well, do you have a preferred school? And if they don't, we're like, great, <laughs> <laughs> because we have schools we want to go to yeah. where maybe it's not where the volunteer would live. Right. And so we make a real effort to get anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And, and how many kids typically are in a club? You know, it can vary based on the size of the club, but I would say 25 as an average is what we had uh, 25 to 40 in the last year to two. Okay. Um, I will tell you that the first year and usually the very first year a school has a club, it's much higher. In my first club at Red Bank, we had 140 children enrolled wow. in Good News Club. We had to divide it into three clubs yeah. to just have, you know, a, re- a reasonable ratio of students <laughs> and volunteers. Yes. Um, but I'd say over the years, it's it's more about the 25 to 30. That's fantastic. So um, if a parent is interested in a club uh, being established on the campus, can they call you? Do they go to the principal? Uh, how do they ask a club to come into existence they called us because okay. the program can't happen without us yes. you know, we cover the liability insurance we handle all the administrative work uh, we secure the approvals uh, do all of the reservation requests but we don't want to do any of that until we're fully prepared which gotcha. means the full team which has to be a minimum of three preferably four yeah um is fully trained and had all of their background screening done because when i call a principal i want to say we could start tomorrow oh i love that and you know if someone wants to start a club but they don't have their team and you call and you ask the principal's permission and then you don't get the resources when you expect them that affects your reputation oh very much so so i have a hard rule that we don't ask until everyone is trained and ready to go and could start the next day if given the opportunity and if there's a delay well i've got another school you can go to in the meantime and we've had to do that before you're almost in a position where you're training on a constant level you know every day you know you've got teams that you've got availability of folks who can do the training and then the training of folks if you can get enough volunteers so you can get the team together and they can they're ready to go Yes, we will train on a weekly basis if necessary, sometimes even just for one additional worker because things can change in a team's life that's a commitment and maybe someone has to step off the team. Well, we would never want that uh, club to be compromised or we always will maintain our child protection ratios. And so, um, like I said, our teacher trainers are wonderful. 
And we have a, a new field missionary, Ruth Diaz, down who actually lives in Exeter, who's now managing our South Valley population. Wow. And um, soon she'll be able to do training for volunteers there. We go down as far south as Corcoran yeah. and Spring Valley uh, in, down in Porterville, Amazing. Um, up to Dunlap and Wasuma in the mountains. <laughs> and we're really praying. We would love to get a club started in Kalinga. We have one worker there. Okay. And she She's been praying with us. She comes and helps us with outreaches. We're going to be doing an outreach in Kalinga later this month, but we would really love for some great Christian folks in Kalinga to step up and to help us plant ministry at the elementary school there. Boy, that'd be fantastic. And, uh, you know, Kalinga is a really interesting community. It's a good group of people. I worked with them when I was county superintendent and things. So a lot of really positive things are going on. Uh, one of the questions when we get back, I want to ask is how long does a, a volunteer usually serve? You know, what's the length of time? Do you have to make a lifelong commitment or can it be a shorter period of time? And then we want to talk about the uh, Daryl Rogers Golf Tournament, which is one of your annual fundraisers. So we're going to handle that. I can't believe three segments are done already. Uh, we're so glad to have you with us, folks. Uh, you're listening to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. You're listening to Powell to the People. Write it down. People on the best talk in town. Hey, welcome back to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. We're certainly glad that you're with us today. It's been exciting. We've got uh, Tammy Beers, the uh, CEF director, uh, right here in Fresno. Good news clubs. A lot of amazing things are taking place. We were having a conversation about how long do you serve as a volunteer? Can you say, uh, okay, I've got six months of my life is available right now? Uh, do I have to sign on forever? What what happens with that? Well, honestly, I have asked people to make a commitment till Jesus returns or find a replacement. <laughs> no, I like that. I like so that. So I know that not everyone can make that long term of a commitment, but I do like to throw that in yes. because if something happens and you need to step out or step off, help us recruit a yep. replacement so the ministry can be sustained. But I do I know that that's not practical for most volunteers. Sure. Um, and we have various options. We usually ask them for a commitment for one school year. Okay. Um, but we've even altered that, that if they can prepare like they would for a missions trip overseas for one week, would you be willing to teach one day a week in a mission field for five weeks or six weeks? Oh, because our curriculum books are in six week segments. So we'll, if you can only do six weeks, that's great. We'll find a team. We'll put you on a travel team. If you can do more, we'll send you to another school and another school. We can okay. actually go to five schools if we start early in the year yeah. um, in a single school year. And while our desire would be to have a team there for a whole year Permanent. for the discipleship, yep. Yep. it gives us a chance to demonstrate our ministry to the parents while we're ministering to the children and our prayer is that they would rise up and plant their own club that will be more sustaining in that yeah. area. Boy, what a creative idea. I really like that. Well, I our know. travel teams, the Lord uh, blessed us with that idea several years ago now. But I have to say there are people serving in our ministry um, in their late 80s. Wow. And they've been on board. I mean, I've been involved with the ministry now for 19 years, and they started before I Is that right? got involved. So wow. I don't think there's any retirement in God's economy. <laughs> no, not at all. I call it refirement, not retirement. Right. You know? Well, some have said that they're going to retire, and then, you know, they pick up the phone and say, I just want to come back. I so that's it. great, too. <laughs> well, you know, there are a lot of really good people. I know um, quite a number of folks who are involved in good news clubs and and the enthusiasm they have that they get from seeing these bright-eyed kids mm -hmm. that just need to know the Lord and, uh, and how tough the situations are at home, but they've got a, that hour, hour and a half a week of just someone who cares deeply about them mm -hmm. and they share the love of the Lord with that, that uh, student and it changes their lives forever, both the volunteer and the kid. Right. You know, I heard in one of my earliest training classes at our corporate offices in Warrington, Missouri, that um, it's more important to teach the children than to teach the lesson. Uh, and yeah. so we put a lot of emphasis on a relational club schedule. We want it to have a soft opening. So there is time 
to really learn their names. And yes. if they're involved in sports, find out what it is. And if they had a game, how did it turn out? Or if they've given prayer requests in yep. our God can, because God can do anything and they put their prayer requests in there privately, wow. um, then we want to follow up with that. If it's something that's appropriate to speak about publicly. Sure. sure. I love it. Uh, that, that is such a good idea. And, and kids do have needs and they do want to be prayed for, you know, and a lot of folks don't understand that, but kids get it. Yes, you know, they, they do. They get it. They do. I won't reveal the name because uh, it, it, I don't have permission to share it, but there was a little boy in our Good News Club, and it had to be in either 2004, maybe 2005, who was in a foster home. And he was delightful. He was so rambunctious, but so sweet. And uh, we were teaching them about prayer and the power of prayer and that God can do anything. And we had a break for Christmas. And when he came back, he came with such enthusiasm to tell us that God had answered his prayers because his foster family agreed to adopt him. Wow. And so um, <laughs> I've never forgotten that. And he works in a public place in the Clovis area and I realized he was coming to this where we were eating. And I said, do you remember me? And he said, oh, Mrs. Spears, I could never forget you. <laughs> it just warmed my heart. So. Oh, I got goosebumps right then, you know, <laughs> just thinking about that. Uh, God does answer prayer. You and I both have evidence in our lives of that happening. Right. And so when you hear one of the kids say something like that, it's pretty unique. Oh, it's amazing. I love the idea of a God can. You know, that, yeah, that, yeah. That's pretty slick. It's pretty a literal slick. can yes. that they put their prayer requests in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to get that for uh, more adults, too. Yes, you know, I think so. And, and understanding that. Well, we've got a unique event coming up in September. It's the Daryl Rogers Memorial Golf Tournament. And uh, this is the fourth year coming up for that. It's one of your big fundraisers for the year. Uh, and and, it, and folks, uh, Daryl Rogers was the football coach at Fresno State. Uh, Marsha Rogers is his wife. Uh, Daryl's no longer with us, but love the Lord uh, was a, a tremendous influence on me. Uh, he was at Fresno State. I think his first year was my first year. He was coach. I was a student and uh, we got to be friends over the years. So uh, I've, I've known Daryl since 1966. So uh, that's a long time, uh, but Great sense of humor, mm -hmm. um, had a, a love for the Lord that was really good. So tell us a little bit about uh, what gave you the idea for a golf tournament. Well, in all honesty, um, Marsha and Daryl were supporters of our ministry, but I met Marsha in Bible Study Fellowship, and she became a volunteer. And she served in a Good News Club, and then she joined our governing committee and still serves yeah. uh, in our governing committee. Um they love the Lord. They they supported so many events. And when he died in nineteen or uh, 2018, it was Marsha's idea to do a golf tournament to honor his memory, but to benefit the ministry for children because it would be important to Daryl. And um, it's been a wonderful event because so many people who did know him as a coach um, at different levels, college, uh, NFL, um, have responded and yep. we're so grateful for that. It's a fun event. It's an opportunity for us to raise awareness with a new population of people about the ministry too. Yeah. In fact, that's on October 8th, 2022. Uh, and if you call 226-5539, you can get your foursome signed up. It's uh, $600 for a foursome, $150 for a player, but it's a great opportunity to have a lot of fun uh, at the same time, raise a lot of money for a really good cause. And uh, I'll tell you, John Barron's a former Fresno State quarterback and myself are uh, the uh, co-chairs of the event. And uh, one of the unique things, folks, I don't know if you realize this, but Mike Martz, a Super Bowl winning uh, you know, coach for St. Louis Rams, uh, has been played in it uh, three years in a row and probably yeah. will be there for the fourth year. But uh, an amazing guy uh, donates a lot of money to help out as well. Um, Mike Martz, uh, Fresno State, uh, was a, a tight end for John Barron's when they were at Fresno State together. So there are a lot of connections from the people here in the Valley. And, and Daryl obviously was at uh, the Detroit Lions. He was at Michigan State, uh, Arizona State. So he's been a lot of different places Uh very well known. There's a big effort right now to get him into the NC2A Hall of Fame as well uh, with all of the good things that he had done. Uh, 
So I, I really hope that does happen, and it's it's something that would really make a big difference. But we're also looking for T sponsors. We're looking for folks who, uh, you know, that costs you two hundred and fifty dollars have your company name on a a T box, uh, so that you know, a lot of folks can see you. Uh, we have usually have a celebrity or someone on a three par. Uh, a par three and an opportunity for you to try to beat the chief. Uh, Dara, I know that, uh, you know, um, a number of folks have done that over the years. Uh, we've had uh, Alan Autry. We've had uh, Chief uh, Dyer yeah. was there at different times. So we've done some things that are really fun. Uh, it's a great time. And one of the unique things is we don't do a dinner afterwards where we waste your time. Right. Uh, <laughs> we have you come. We play golf. You get fed on the course. You get your prize when you leave uh, if you buy a raffle ticket and we move on. Uh, it's really a cool tournament. Well, you know, that's been one of the things that has been expressed as being appreciated the most uh, because a lot of times charitable events will be very, very lengthy. Yes. And if you're a golfer, you want to come in golf. And we heard <laughs> that loud and clear after the first year. And so we've streamlined it so you can come have your golf and support the ministry to reach children for Christ and go home and get along with your weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's October 8th, 2022 at Eagle Springs Golf and Country Club. And all you got to do is call 226-5539 and Tammy or one of the team will answer any questions that you have. But we've also got some other good folks that are on our committee. Uh, Jim uh, Atrat, uh, we've got uh, Nathaniel Barrows, uh, John and myself, uh, Robert Nichols, Pat Plummer, another uh, football coach at Hoover. Marsha Rogers is on it. Larry Thompson, Dick Williams. We've got some great folks that are involved. But we want you to be involved and to raise money for CEF, Child Evangelism Fellowship. It's really a great program. It's an opportunity for you to do something that's fun for you. But if you got a company, buy a foursome, uh, do a donation. We're still looking for gold sponsors too. $5,000 to get you a gold sponsorship, 2,500 for silver, a thousand for bronze. And folks, I know out there, you guys can do that. Uh, you know, you can step up and make a big difference in the life of a child by simply uh, joining in uh, Daryl Rogers Memorial Golf Tournament at Eagle Springs on October 8th, 2022. Well, Tammy, we're down to 50 seconds. What what would you like to conclude with? I can't believe how fast this time has gone. Well, I first just want to thank you uh, for this opportunity and the privilege. And I do hope that anyone and everyone who hears this will pray for the children of our valley. Um, they will grow up. They will take over our cities, our states, our um, government. And, and they, they may or may not know the Lord, yeah. and we would much prefer that they did. So there's benefit to them now, but there's eternal value. And so that's our desire to change their eternal home. Well, Tammy, you've done some great work uh, with child evangelism. Uh, kudos to you. Thank the Lord for the work that you're doing and things we're just very appreciative. Uh, folks, uh, remember, uh, all you got to do is call 226-5539 and uh, you can sign up for that golf tournament or become a volunteer, or just send some money in and help them out. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You've been listening to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. We'll see you next week.